But he wasn't showing that mercy that had been shown to him. He wasn't showing the kindness that had been shown to him. He wasn't showing the, the patience of God with these people who were worn out after 40 years of walking through this desert whom God kept providing for. I'm getting really long-winded, aren't I? <laughs> no. 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 <laughs> no father, right faith, certain hope, perfect charity. And then he asked for a couple more gifts. <laughs> He's not done yet. St. Francis is never a half-measure person, if you haven't noticed. It's all or nothing. He's a good Italian. It's all or nothing. Never a half-measure for St. Francis. So then he asks for more. Right faith, certain hope, perfect charity, insight and wisdom. Insight and wisdom. Give me insight into your holy will. Give me wisdom to your holy will. He asked really for these six gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, six gifts to be given to him: faith, hope, charity, wisdom, understanding. We can say insight, understanding, so that he may have the knowledge of God's will. But notice what he prays: insight and wisdom to know and to do <laughs> your holy will. <laughs> Give me the insight and wisdom, not just to know it, but to do it. To do it. He needed that knowledge of God to do it. Not just to know it. Not just to realize, okay, this is what God wants of me. I'll get around to it. No, to do it. Give me insight and wisdom to know and to do your most holy and true will. Look at those two words. Your most holy, most holy and true will. Those aren't insignificant words. Francis chooses his words carefully. Holy and true will. If I understand that God's will for me is holy, that means that's my path to holiness. So let me do what's holy. Let me do what's good. Your will, which is good for me, even if it goes against my will, even if it makes me break all attachments, even if it makes me have to look at the things that I want to look at, no matter what it costs me, Lord, let me do it. Because it's holy. And it's true. It's true. Nothing false. No mirages. What's true? What's true and what's holy? What a beautiful prayer. He prays before that San Damiano cross. Lord, enlighten the darkness of my heart. Give me right faith, certain hope, perfect charity, insight and wisdom to know and to do your most holy and true will. And then we know the cross speaks to him. Rebuild my church, which is falling into ruin. Francis, rebuild my church, falling into ruin. A third time, Francis, rebuild my church, which is falling into ruin. Now God's will is revealed to him. Did he fully understand what God wanted? No. <laughs> he got it pretty wrong, first off. Oh, let me fix the church. Okay, let me get the back. up here. You know, it's like he's, he starts rebuilding that church. He didn't realize the full measure of what God was asking of him. And that is so true. When we start upon the path of the Lord, we start doing what God wants, we think it's one thing and God has a whole other plan as part of it. <laughs> Buckle your seatbelt. Once you say yes, you're in for quite a ride. I can tell you, 25 years of religious life, I was in for quite a ride and the ride ain't over yet. I expect a lot more to come. You never know when the, the roller coaster is going to twist and turn hills up, down. And, Whoa, this is good. You can't control the track. It's God's, you're, you're in the car. God's got the track. You just go with the flow. <laughs> right? Rebuild my church. Now, we'll talk a little bit about that in a couple of talks from now, the whole rebuild my church part, what that meant for Francis. But he sets his heart on it. He's not getting it wrong, really, at first. He's doing what he knows to do, and that's all he knows to do at that moment is to fix this broken church. And it fixed St. Peter's, and then fixed San Damiano's. All part of God's, I mean, St. Mary the Angels, all part of God's will. Each church representing the three orders that he would found, San Damiano's, the poor Clare, St. Peter's representing the third order, and it's Our Lady of the Angels representing the first order. Symbolic of the three orders that he would found. All important for the friars in the future to look back upon. But he sets his heart upon it. He's, okay, I got it, Lord, I'm going to do this now. And he sets his heart on fixing that church. And he does it fully, freely, willingly, lovingly, giving himself limitlessly. He doesn't know the full plan yet. 
He, he's ready to start doing things, but he's still a little afraid of some things. He's still working through stuff. He's still hiding from his father when his father comes looking for him. Still doing things a bit wrong, like selling his horse, taking some of his father's money, selling some of the cloth, and using that for the church. <laughs> Doesn't have to have things down just right just yet. He's trying, but he's doing it. He's not dragging his heels. And I think that's important in that last point of discernment. When we come to know God's will, once we know that it, we need to move on it, we don't drag our heels. Look at the apostles. When the Lord called them, they left everything and followed him. Peter and Andrew left the nets and family, everything, followed him. James and John left their father in the, father in the boat. Their mother, sounds like their mother left the father too. <laughs> <laughs> she was following around with them quite a bit. Maybe, maybe somebody was around. I don't know. <laughs> and that was, that, was, that was a pair of those two. One of the sons of thunder. You had to have a pretty bad temper if they call you the sons of thunder. Or your dad does, one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew. He was collecting taxes. He, Matthew was not a good guy. Matthew had issues. Jesus has dinner at Matthew's house. Who's there? Prostitutes, tax collectors, ill repute. Not a very good group of friends Matthew had. And the Lord calls him and he leaves all of that to follow him. The only one that we know that goes away sad is the rich young man. So we have to move on. When the Lord calls, we move. And that freedom and that joy and that trust, knowing that he's calling us out of love, for love, in love. He calls us from his love, for his love in his love, out of love, with the pure love of God. To response to that love, the response to that love lies in our understanding of the intensity of his love for us. As we said the past of the two nights, when I'm convicted of his love for me, I am free to move. When I not only consent but choose that, what God has chosen for me. I am not only free, but I'm joyful. Even if God has chosen suffering for me. I consent and say, yes, okay, I'm doing it. But when I choose it with God, I'm not only free, now I have joy. I have joy because I've chosen what God has chosen for me because I know what he's chosen for me is because he loves me. And his choices for me are much better than my own choices for me. So I choose his will. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Francis would write this about the Our Father. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That we may love you with our whole heart by always thinking of you. With our whole mind by directing our whole in intention towards you and seeking your glory in everything. And with all our strength by spending all our energies and affections of soul and body in the service of your love alone. And may we love our neighbors as ourselves, encouraging them all to love you as best we can, rejoicing at the good fortune of others, just as it were our own, and sympathizing with their misfortunes while giving offense to no one. That was his paraphrase of the Our Father. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May God bless you and Mary keep you.